So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be talking about iPadOS 14.5 Beta 4. It released last night to developers and I wanted to walk through exactly what's new, if anything is worth it and if there's any issues because I ran into an issue which I don't know if it's iPad OS 14.5 Beta 4 specific or if it's something that's happening with my Magic Keyboard. So without further ado, let's figure out what's new and what's going on. So before we actually get started, what I want to show you guys or tell you is the actual size of it. I didn't get a chance to take a screenshot, but we're looking at about 400 megabytes. So give yourself about 800 to a gigabyte of space in order to really get this installed correctly and make sure there's no hiccups when installing the application. And then the next thing we're going to do is go into the about section, click on that 14.5 and see just how close we are to that final release. So we're on 18E. 5178A. So what does that A mean? That means we're getting close to that Gold Master or that Release Candidate Edition that should be releasing maybe on Thursday of this week or next week on Tuesday before that March 23rd event because that's probably when we're going to get the public release for everybody to use on both their iPhone and their iPads. And then the only real visual difference that I was able to see with 14.5 Beta 4 compared to Beta 3 was if you go back into the general, go to Software Update, this looks a little bit different than what it used to before. So if I pull this up right here, first off, they got rid of that green check that we saw with beta 3 and beta 2. So before, it used to say iPadOS 14.5, like you've been updated and there'd be a little green check, but now it just says that you're up to date with no green check. And then also, if you see up here where it says download only, that's new too. So if you click on here, this is a brand new setting. So download new updates and install security updates. So what this means is that it basically allows you to decide hey, I only want the security updates or I only want to download the new updates, right? So that is what's in there. It gives you another little option to toggle off and on, which is nice to have. But like I said, overall, there's nothing else that I've seen differently. Nothing else is changing differently. But overall, the performance of the iPad itself has been outstanding, right? Battery life has gotten better. Overall, usability is awesome. So if you go into the battery section real quick, let's go down here. Let's go to battery. Let's kind of crop in a little bit. So... This is what the battery life has been over the last 24 hours. Again, you can see that it's been plugged in the entire time. But if we go the last 10 days, which you can see an up and down a lot, we're getting about four hours and 17 minutes of screen on time, right? So it's getting a little bit better. I was getting high threes, low fours. Now we're starting to creep into the mid fours because I'm using all those different tips and tricks, which I'll link below if you guys want to do some tips and tricks on how to increase battery life with iPadOS. But the one thing that I did see immediately was just how much Safari, YouTube, and OneNote was taking up, and also FaceTime. So you can see that FaceTime is actually pretty optimized because with 14 hours and 49 minutes of screen on FaceTime, it's only taken up 70%, which is nice to have. So overall, battery life has been pretty good, and it's been getting better. Again, I have the 2018 model, so keep that in mind. Mine is the oldest iPad Pro with the new visual changes, right? So 2018 iPad Pro. But one big issue that I did want to talk about, and I'm going to put a little B-roll over, is that my Magic Keyboard is not working that well. So if I move this over, bring this over here, my Magic Keyboard is not connecting very well with the iPad Pro. And I took off a bunch of different things and even reapplied it. So you guys know that I have a D-Brand skin on the back. I never had an issue with connectivity with the D-Brand skin and the three-pin connectors on the back, but I guess maybe that's causing an issue. But I have taken it off and then reapplied one that's still not the issue so I'm thinking maybe it's you know it's kind of dying out on me maybe it's a magic keyboard issue itself nothing to do with the software but again it's just something that basically it's not recognizing it and it only recognizes it in pieces so when I plug it in or I magnetically attach it to the magic keyboard it'll recognize it for a second but then when I start to move around with the trackpad it starts to jitter on me and it doesn't fully go with my movement right so it'll kind of like skip over some of my movements and same with the keys, but kind of unfortunate. Hopefully that gets fixed, but that's gonna do it for this view. Let's go back to the normal view. So as everybody saw from a physical standpoint, from a visual standpoint, we saw really nothing different aside from that one setting. And I think Apple, again, is just tightening up all the screws with 14.5 to be ready to release here soon to the public. So I do believe that Apple will release 14.5 to the public on March 23rd, which is when their announcement or when their new event is gonna be supposedly because that's gonna give us the ability to use those new AirTags that are probably coming out. It's gonna be something probably new with iPadOS 14.5 on the new iPad Pro that's coming out. So March 23rd is the date for iOS and iPadOS 14.5 in my opinion. So 
that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Don't forget to check out channel sponsor Paperlike for always keeping us protected. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Definitely hit the like button for me. It helps get this into more people's eyes and in front of more people. That'll really help me out, guys. But don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, peace.